To get started with programmable virtual circuits, go to tinkercad.com. Once you're there, you're going to be tempted to click sign up. Don't do that. Click sign in. Then click sign in using social providers. We are going to sign in using our school Google account. Type in your username, just like you normally do to get onto the computers at school, followed by at apps.matsuk12.us. Put in the same password that you normally use to log into your computer. And then once you get to this screen, yours will look a little different than mine. Uh, in the upper left corner, you should see an icon that looks something like this. Go ahead and click on it. And when you do, then you should see a screen that looks similar to this. Click on circuits and then create new circuit. Once you do that, you'll come to a screen that looks like this. This is where we're going to actually create our virtual circuit. Um, there's a button up here for opening and closing the components drawer. And you can drag components into your circuit like so. For now, go ahead and close that. And we are actually going to click back on this Tinkercad icon in the upper left corner. And then we are going to click on properties for this thing we just created. And we're going to change the name to stop light. That's enough for now. I'm going to save the changes. And now I can open it back up. And let's see here. I'm going to click on tinker this. And now I can get back to working on my virtual circuit and eventually programming it. Uh, the rest of the video tutorial you will be watching uh, was used uh, with, uh, was created using a website called 123D Circuits, which uh, eventually moved all their stuff over to Tinkercad here. So you'll see some slight differences between uh, what you're looking at right now and the rest of the video tutorial, but it's close enough that you should not have any problems following along with that slightly older uh, portion of the tutorial. If you have any questions, just to just get ask. an idea of what you can do with circuits, uh, 123d.circuits.io, click on components and add an LED to your project and a resistor. And we can add uh, some batteries. I'm going to pick a different type of battery here. I'm going to pick the 2AA battery set up here just because it's going to work out a little easier for our wiring. I'm going to rotate it to make the wiring a little bit easier as well. And you can see right here it says positive. So we want to connect this positive terminal to that part of the diode, the anode, and then connect the negative side to what was connected to the cathode up here, but now it's uh, going to go through a resistor. If I've connected this correctly, when I go ahead and start the simulation, I should see the LED light up a little bit. If I click on the resistor and change its from, uh, resistance from 1,000 ohms or 1 kilo ohm, 1,000 ohms to 100 ohms, then it should light a little brighter. If I lower the value too much, then it gets damaged, it burns up. So I'm going to put it back to 100 ohms here and 
just see that it's shining properly again. At this point, I encourage you to take some time and uh, grab some other LEDs and uh, you can change their colors. Have some fun with this, set up a few, uh, and uh, get creative. Once you've had enough fun with setting up LEDs, let's go ahead and program them. I'm going to get rid of the battery pack here, and I'm going to add what's called an Arduino to our circuit. Right here, I'm going to make sure that the Arduino connects this ground pin to the resistor here. And then I'm going to connect the other leg to pin 13. Now, most Arduinos have an onboard LED, an onboard light emitting diode. That's what this is, and that's actually what this represents. It's just a much smaller one. Most Arduinos have those connected to pin 13. Um, it's a way of being able to uh, use it as feedback or some sort of uh, indication that your program is so, running and whatnot. Now that it's time to introduce the code editor, I am going to interrupt the uh, existing tutorial with a slide update. If I click to code editor, um, you will now see a block icon in Tinkercad. I don't want to program with blocks. I want to program using the actual language that Arduinos are programmed in. So I'm going to click this button to turn it off. And you see a warning here. It says, are you sure you want to close the blocks editor? Any blocks that you currently have will be lost. The code in the text editor will remain and become edit editable. Yes, that's exactly what I want to do. And now I'm just looking at regular text here. Be careful about clicking this again, because if you do, look what will happen. Enabling the blocks editor will clear any code that you have in the text editor. Are you sure you want to continue? You definitely don't want to do that, because you're going to put a lot of time and effort into creating some code here. And if you switch back to blocks, you're going to lose all your work. So I'm going to hit cancel. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the code editor. And you can see the default program that comes on most Arduinos right here. Uh, the two slashes indicate that all of the information that comes behind them is a comment, which is something that is not compiled. It's not an instruction that's actually turned into ones and zeros and then loaded onto the Arduino, which is just uh, a little computer. Uh, this is a note basically from one programmer to another, or perhaps from a programmer to themselves, uh, in the event that they make a program and then they're looking back on it uh, at some point in the future, they just want to remind themselves what they were doing. Here this uh, comment says that pin 13 has an LED connected on most Arduino boards, like I already said. They're going to give it a name. They're calling it LED. So this is a variable. Think of a variable as a box. What's the label on the box? The label on the box is LED. What's inside the box? What's inside the box is the number 13. Down here, we have the setup routine. There's a setup and there's a loop in all Arduino programs. The setup here uh, is what we use to determine what, how we're going to set up our Arduino, what's hooked up to it. And so in, in the setup only runs once. Here we're uh, stating that the pin mode for LED, which if we look back up here, really just means 13, pin 13 right here, which is connected to this green LED, we're setting that to an output. So we're sending information out to this LED. Over here, I'm going to write to that LED high. That basically turns it on. And then I'm going to delay for 1000 milliseconds or one second. And then I'm going to write to that LED, pin 13, low, which turns it off, and I'm going to do that again for a thousand milliseconds or one second. Because this is in a loop, this little bit of code will just go over and over and over. I'm going to go ahead and start the simulation. And here you can see that the onboard LED is blinking and the LED that we connected to the Arduino is blinking. 
Now I'm going to modify the program just slightly to make it a little bit more understandable. I'm going to say the green LED and I'm going to do that down here and then I have to do that in these last two spots down here. All right, now I'm going to start the simulation again just to make sure that all of the changes I've made are working. And indeed they are. So I've changed the variable name here. And since I changed it here, I had to change how I refer to it here, here, and here. Now I'm going to add another LED. This time, I want this LED to be yellow. I need to connect it again to ground and this time I'm going to connect the other end to 12. So the high voltage side of this LED is pin 12 if I set it high and the low voltage side is always here, the ground. Now I'm going to go ahead and change the code. I'm going to add int yellow LED and this time it's going to be connected to pin 12. Then I have to set that pin to be an output And then down here, what I want to do is make the yellow LED alternate with the green LED. So when the green LED is on, I want the yellow one off. So I'm going to say digital right yellow LED low. And down here, I'm going to say digital right yellow LED high. Let's see if this code works. And here you can see the two LEDs are alternating. Uh, on your own now, I would like you to add a third LED, attach it to pin 11, and then modify the code as necessary to get it so that it blinks from green to yellow to red, just like a stop sign or a stoplight.